Kate Smith Bauer. Good evening, this is Ted Collins saying Merry Christmas and starting another Kate Smith Hour on its way to Americans everywhere. Tied up with holly and red ribbons to be opened under your Christmas tree tonight comes our annual Yuletide show divided into packages as follows. The Aldridge Family, comedian Jackie Gleason, Jack Miller and the Boys, my your hostess, Kate Smith. Kate Smith. Clifford Goldsmith with Dick Jones as Henry Aldrich and Jackie Kelk as Homer Brown. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are Catherine Roth and House Jameson. You know, at Christmas time, which is above all else a family celebration, what could be more appropriate than to drop in on the Aldriches and their neighbors as they're led around and around the family circle by teenage Henry? The scene opens at Homer Brown's house, and the time is Christmas afternoon. Now listen, Henry. This wristwatch isn't yours. My father just gave it to me for Christmas. But it's exactly like the one my Aunt Harriet gave me. And I can't find it. Look, couldn't I just borrow yours until I get to our Christmas dinner? Oh, no, Henry. This is a waterproof, shockproof, dustproof watch. And I'm not going to trust you with it. But, Homer, my Aunt Harriet's having Christmas dinner with us. And they've got her place up right on my left, next to where I wear my watch. No. Supposing my folks ask me what time it is. All right. Give me a call, and I'll be very glad to tell you what time it is. No. Would you be interested in three weeks of my allowance? Well, three weeks? Come on out here in the front hall so we don't bother my father. Boy, thanks, Homer. Boy, if I got to run when I left the house, my mother was just getting the turkey out of the oven. Oh, Mom. What is it, Father? What time is it? <laughs> Why, uh... Oh, Mr. Brown, it's exactly five minutes to two. So long, Homer. Oh, Mom, could you come here a minute, please? Now, Father? What was it you just gave Henry as he went out the door? Why, I tell you, Father... He's going to give me three weeks of his allowance. I want you to march over to Henry's house and get your watch back, or you'll go without your allowance for three months. Man, ask Harriet whether she won't have another piece of turkey. More turkey, Harriet? No, thank you. Where in the world were you able to get turkey? Why, uh... We shot this one, Harriet. It was flying over the house. <laughs> Henry, is uh, 
But is that watch I gave you keeping good time? Oh, yes, Aunt Harriet. It doesn't lose it. It hasn't lost... It's swell. Who could that be at the door? I'll see who it is. Don't you want me to, Mother? No, thank you, Mary. I'm already on the way. Let me see the watch, Henry. Oh, you want to see it? Here it is, Aunt Harriet. Hello there, Homer Brown. How are you doing, Mrs. Aldrich? Could I speak to Henry a minute? I'm sorry, but Henry's at dinner. Oh, but gee, Mrs. Aldrich, my father says I have to see him. Homer, Henry will be busy all afternoon entertaining his Aunt Harriet. But Mrs. Aldrich... Homer, I'm quite sure anything you have to say can wait until morning. Goodbye, dear, and Merry Christmas. Okay, Mrs. Aldrich. The only thing is... Alice, who is it? Homer Brown, Sam. He never comes over here except when we're eating. Who does it, Mother? Homer. Apparently, he has no idea whatever of the time. Oh, Homer? Uh, Homer Brown? What's the matter with him? Nothing. Nothing. I'll clear the table, Mother. Mary, you help get the dinner. I'm sure Henry would be glad to clear the table. Oh, oh yes, Mother. She can turn all the slow Christmas presents I got the least I can do. Put everything on the big kitchen table. Yes, Mother. Hey, Henry. Hey, Henry. Jesus, who's that? It's me. Homer, where are you? I'm here behind the refrigerator. <laughs> Henry, I've got to have my watch. Listen, Homer, you got to get out of here. But, Henry, I... Quiet, Homer. I thought so hear you. Henry? Oh, boy. Yes, Mother? Get out, Homer. I've got to go back there. I'm going to wait right here, Henry, until I get my watch. No, Homer. Henry! I was just fixing the dishes carefully, Father. Here I come. Was there something you wanted? I'll take the rest of the things out there. If you're going to take that long with each trip. Now, wait, Mother. I'll take everything in one load. Now, please sit and visit with your Aunt Harriet. You know, I think I'll go up and lie down. What's the matter with you? Why, to tell you the truth, Father, I think I have a fever. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, what are you doing? I, I'm tired. What do you think I found in the kitchen? Listen, Mother, let me explain. I left the burner on under a brand new pan. You did? Is, is that all? Well, what do you mean, dear, is that all? Mary? Yes, Mother? How many pieces of pie did you cut out there? Five. Well, I could only find four. <laughs> There's one missing. Well, what could that be? Uh, that whistle, you mean? Yes, it sounded as though it was right here in this house. I think it came from the cellar. Uh, from the cellar, Mary? She was walked in the cellar that would whistle. Uh, and, and, Harry, will you have some salt on my pie? Well, <laughs> some people like it. Sam, is the hot water heater down in the basement all right? Perhaps I better go down and see. You should go, Father, and finish your pie. I don't mind going down, Henry. I'm halfway out to the kitchen already. Well, we you get down there, just turn the glass off. Yes, Father. Hey, Homer. Homer, are you down there in the basement? Yes, and I want my watch. It's so quiet down here. Where are you? In the cold bin. Listen, Homer, do you want to get me into serious trouble? And do you want me to go up and tell your Aunt Harriet that's my watch you have? Please, I beg of you, with all its decent inside you, don't go up. Henry! Yes, Father? What are you doing down there? Oh, my, uh... I'm sweeping the cellar. What for? Well, it's something I should have done weeks ago, Father. Quick, Homer, my father's coming. Don't let me up the stairs. Can't go upstairs. you got to go in here. In where? In this little room where my father has his work been. But she went... Okay. Henry? Don't bother to come down, Father. What's the trouble down there? Are you in there, Homer? Yeah. But, Henry, you've still got my watch. Henry, may I ask why you're sweeping the cellar while your Aunt Harriet is taking dinner with us? Oh, why, I guess I just didn't stop the thing, Father. Who snapped the lock on the door to my workroom? Why, could I have, Father? I told everyone in this house the key to that lock has been lost and it must not be closed. You mean it can't be opened? Of course it can't until I get a locksmith tomorrow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Who said that? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. card. What? Oh, a card, Aunt Harriet? Either you're going to play gin rummy with me or you're going to stare at the wall, but I want to know which. Yes, Aunt Harriet. I'll draw one. Henry, do you know anything about Homer Brown? Homer? Mr. Brown just phoned again. Homer hasn't been home all afternoon. Is that right? The way this younger generation stays out nowadays. Henry, draw that card. Oh, yes. 
Is that someone sawing wood? You're sawing wood, Alice. Well, well, well. I thought I heard a saw. Henry, you haven't discarded. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> well, well, well. What do you mean? Well, well, well. Keep quiet. I thought I heard that sawing again. It sounded as though it was in the basement. Oh, would anyone like to hear me play the piano? Henry, we would like to figure out where that sawing is coming from. Oh, excuse me. Now then, let's listen. Well? You wait. Who could that be? Sam, you didn't invite anybody over to spend Christmas Day with us, did you? Not that I remember. I'm going down cellar and see what that is. Who is it, Alice? I don't know, dear, and I won't know until I open this door. Hello, Mrs. Aldrich. Homer! Mother, is that Homer? Henry, I want to talk to you in private. Homer, what on earth do you have on your clothes? Oh, that's just a little coal dust and sawdust. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I'll go into the living room and wait till Henry's through. Who's coming in here? I am. I've always wanted to learn how to play gin rummy. Now I can. Now listen, Homer. Well, if you want to learn from me, young man, you're too late. I'm going home. You are, Aunt Harriet? You really have to? Boy, that's swell. I mean, sir. <laughs> Henry, I won't see your watch. Wait, it's exactly eight minutes after five. Take it off. I want to look at it. Off, off. Henry, are you taking it off? Henry, how would you like to have me take this watch down to the jewelers and have your monogram put on it? I, uh... Uh, I, I monogram, Henry. Yours? Oh, I don't think you'd like that. How do you know he wouldn't? No, Aunt Harriet. Gee whiz. Supposing Henry wanted to change his name sometime. To what, for instance? Oh, where did I put my pocketbook? But, Aunt Harriet, I look ridiculous. Henry, having your initials put on there won't make you look ridiculous. No, but it will me. No, man, you aren't jealous of Henry, are you? Oh, no. Why should I be jealous? My goodness, that. Well, oh, what's the matter, Aunt Harriet? I put your watch down on this table while I opened my pocketbook, and now it's gone. It is? So long, Henry. I'm going home. Homer, wait a second. You can't go now. Bye, Henry. Henry, come back here and help me find your watch. That's the oddest thing I've ever seen. What is, Sam? When I was just down in the basement, I tried the door on my workroom, and the entire board the lock was fastened to came right off in my hand. <laughs> it did, Father? It did. Well, do you, a, do you suppose it could have been termite? Henry. Get down here under the table to look for your watch. Yes, Aunt Harriet. Henry Aldridge, I was just up in the bathroom, and what do you think? Uh, what, Mary? I found your brand new watch Aunt Harriet gave you up there. What's that? You couldn't have, Mary. I haven't even been up there. But Aunt Harriet, it's right here. Can you imagine that? Did I leave? I mean, well, of course, maybe I'm just losing my mind. Mary, may I have that watch one minute? Yes, Father. Henry, I'm a little embarrassed to have you show Aunt Harriet how careless you are with a delicate, expensive present such as this. Such as a... Get it, somebody! Sam Moldrick, what did you drop it for? Oh, boy. Well, and look at it. Oh, you don't have to be embarrassed, Father. See, the last watch I got for Christmas only lasted till noon. <laughs> We bring you now that favorite of nightclub, stage, and radio, that star of the successful Broadway musical Follow the Girls, Mr. Jackie Gleason. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Ted. Well, Jack, at this time, I would like to do one or two hundred amazing impersonations. <laughs> this is a request by someone who I have to request. My first impression will be that of a scene from Charles Lawton's Mutiny on the Bounty. Christian! Come down here, I said! Did you hear me, Christian? I said, come down! Ah, oh, come on, Christian, come on. <laughs> My next impersonation will be Charles Boyer in a scene from his last picture. Sexy. I do the same thing. I'm a pig. <laughs> My next will be a scene from Casablanca with Humphrey Gilcott and Norma Schmerer, where Peter Lorre asks for the information. Peter Lorre. <laughs> Mr. 
you made it for me, Mr. Miller? <laughs> you didn't get me away from one, Mr. Miller? the show business. Well, that's very interesting, but by the way, Jackie, didn't love enter your life at any time? Love? Love. Ted, I I wish you hadn't have mentioned that. <laughs> Jackie, I'm really very sorry if I touched a tender spot. Oh, oh, that's all right. I, <laughs> would you like to talk about it a little bit, Jack? Well, I told you about the rest. I might as well tell all. A little music, please. <laughs> It was in the cocktail lounge of Park Avenue's most fashionable restaurant. There she was, standing in the corner. Her lights were on. <laughs> her discs were revolving. I looked at her and she turned green. Purple, yellow, all the colors of the rainbow dashed through her neon veins. She was the most beautiful jukebox I had ever seen. Dynamic, electric, orthophonic. And tranced, I walked over, put a nickel in her, and she sang the song that was to become our song. That's a me mucho. <laughs> it was then that I knew I was in love. It was the beginning of a tragic romance. That first blissful week cost me ten years of my life, all my self-respect, and four dollars and eighty cents in nickel. Night after night, it was just Juki and I and Bette May Mucho. Bette May Mucho. I just couldn't get enough of her Bette May Mucho. I knew she only loved me for my money. I, I knew she'd play me for a while and then cast me aside like an old shoo-shoo baby. But I was a lost soul. I couldn't resist her. Embarrassed, I would sneak to the cashier and say, A dollar's worth of nickels, please. My friends were beginning to avoid me. They would look at me strangely and say, Here comes Gleason, look out, he'll probably want change. <laughs> Whenever I was away from Juki, I'd remember all the lovely things she said to me the night before. Amour, amour. Bessie me mucho. Or would you rather be a pig? <laughs> and that tender, that tender mad night when she had the hiccups. And kept singing. It had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. <laughs> then, one night I walked in, and, and there she was with another man. He said he was the repair man. Repair man, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there he was, standing close to us. A glass in one hand and a can in the other. <laughs> they were both getting oil. <laughs> After that, she was never quite the same. At first, all she wanted was nickels. But now, she wanted dimes and quarters, too. We began to have little arguments. She talked back to me. 
I pushed number three and she played number four. <laughs> I was running out of cash. One night on my last nickel, I, I asked to play Bessie May Mucho. She lit up and yelled, get out of here and get me some money, too. <laughs> she was giving me the needle. <laughs> then one night it happened. I had noticed that gay, vivacious Juki was slipping. Her neons were sagging. She was getting careless about changing her record. And she was slowing down. As I turned to say goodnight, she said, I'll be seeing you. I looked at her horrified with my heart pounding. She, she was tilted. I phoned for the doctor. He came immediately. He shook his head and said, we'll have to operate at once. She has four slugs in her body. <laughs> he took her away saying, don't worry, my boy. She'll be well and back in no time. The next night, I, I went back to the place. Our place. And there was somebody new standing in Juki's corner. A loud, flashy, painted hussy. A bleached blonde with a curly maple top. <laughs> she winked at me with a magic eye and... And guiltily, I slipped her a nickel. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I did it. I was so ashamed. Juki in the hospital and me playing around with another machine. <laughs> so I went home and I, I waited for Juki's return. But she never came back. She left the hospital and disappeared. I searched for her and couldn't find her. But I heard vague rumors of her decline. From lunchroom to delicatessen. From delicatessen to candy store. And then, then one day I heard she was working in McGillicuddy's saloon. She had a new steel arm and a new set of waxes. I rushed down to find her. I walked in and my heart stood still. She was lying on the floor. There was a big crowd around her. I pushed them aside and said, give her air. How she had changed. There were circles under her eyes where people had sat down and wet glasses. <laughs> She had lost all her color on one side, and, and she had blown a fuse. <laughs> there she was. There she was on the barroom floor. I picked her up in my arm. I put a nickel in her. Nothing happened. I put another nickel in. Nothing happened. I shook her. Speak to me, I cried. Speak to me. Her lights had gone out. She was just a, an empty shell. She had no motor to guide her. Uh, I knew. I knew this was the end. I pressed her close to me. Tears were running down my face. The only jukebox in the world that could ever mean anything to me was dying in my arms. Without a nickel. But before she died, I held her close and whispered, Goodbye, Juki. She smiled tenderly and replied, Goodbye, Jerky. <laughs> Eve in America, a holy night sacred to the memory of a Madonna and the words that have been inscribed about her. And she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And suddenly there was, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace goodwill toward men, a sacred night, and a song sacred to the memory of that Madonna. Kate Smith sings Ave Maria.
Good night. And Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>